Hello Warriors, this is Mars. Welcome back to another ESO PvP commentary. I wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts about this patch with Stam Sork and Stam DK. Generally, generally I identify as a DK, but Stam Sork has been a bit more enjoyable for me since I've returned. I feel like it's due to playstyle and build, but that can be adjusted easily, so until I create a setup on Stam DK that will give me the most bang for my proverbial buck, I will stick to talking about Stam Sork, at least for now. In this video, I want to talk about the stam about the stam sork this patch as well as the build that I'm running, the skills that I feel are the I feel are a bit interesting to me, and sets that I that I like and want to try out on this build. As a disclaimer, this is going to be a longer commentary, so so I will be providing timestamps in the description. Also, if you have any questions or thoughts and opinions to add, please leave them down in the comment section below. I always want to hear what you guys say. Also, I stream on occasion and I upload content regularly for ESO so if you are interested you should sub and join the Legion of Warriors. I like to make alternative setups and I also re all that also retain some competitiveness while still trying to have fun. I will always be open to suggestions when it comes to the build as well. So let's begin. So how do I feel about Stam Sork this patch is the question. Well, depending on playstyle and build, Stamstork, Stamstork is challenging enough to play and keep the mind active without getting bored of a particular weapon setup. And if you do feel boredom creeping in, you're liable to play it in a completely different way, and at, and at a competitive level. Stamstork in its previous iterations and this current one has multiple tools to literally play how you wish to play. That stands true today as it did back then. Fast and hard hitting, Stamstork is a classic class that has aged like a fine wine. I legitimately don't feel like I'm disadvantaged or handicapped in duels, open world, or BGs until you run into those dueling builds that are designed specifically to drop you in an instant. You know the ones that I'm talking about. The the Magplars, the Perfected Wrath of Element Staffs, and the Kajalnar with Nightmare Helms. That shit fucking hurts. Anyway, I think Stampslark has retained its competitiveness throughout the years. And Coming back to this game after so long, I've enjoyed thinking of new possibilities for builds and integrating new things into my own playstyle. The only drawbacks I feel is that Stam Sword isn't naturally tanky, so I feel I feel Nord is the most optimal to compensate for the lack thereof. In, in my mind, I've only played Stam Sword as a Nord, and I feel like in, in, I'm somewhat crutching on the race. But with the amount of damage being pushed out these days, I don't mind it. On second thought, that's not true. I just remembered I started playing Stam Sork as a high elf first, and I enjoyed it. I still kind of enjoyed it until the racial changes, but still, I mean, I it, it's 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 about playstyle. It's about playstyle when it comes to class. I am planning to make a few Stam Sork builds on EU with using an Imperial, and I think that will be interesting enough to keep me entertained for a while at least. A few of the ability changes like the bound armament changes was something I wasn't completely on board with. I liked the block mitigation, but I do not dislike what it has become. Having a toggleable damage dealing ability that is activated by actively attacking gives the class so much identity and playability that it makes it enjoyable to play. Another thing is I don't like how much I'm forced to rely on dizzy swing. Well, dizzying swing as a primary form of burst outside of my ultimate, but I think that can be worked around. Besides those things, I'm satisfied with the implosion changes because the RNG needed a nerf. The deal, the dark deal changes got mixed reviews. All uh, honestly, all I have to say about this that is I don't dislike it. It works for my needs, and that's practically it. So in terms of skills, I swapped out car for D swing. This is no longer a dot focused build and is more set up for burst. I switched from Teal Steel Tornado to Executioner to follow up my burst with a, a comboable execute. My flex skills are Quick Cloak and Bound Armament. Both are very solid skills. Quick Cloak is the is great for AoEs and Bound Armament has been an interesting skill to use. I've gotten a few pretty decent kills with it and it's a good means for catching people off guard when they're trying to separate from you. Rally and for momentum are uh, kind of go hand in hand. I feel like uh, I feel like depending on how I wish to play it I have options. For momentum gives me a goaded, literally a goaded form of snare removal, but vigor has to be maintained well. And oh, in conjunction yeah, with dark friend deal. Is as soon as you vigor you have to dark deal immediately and then vigor again. It's but you gotta be careful with your dark deals because people will interrupt you very easily. 
Um, when rally, uh, where whereas rally is a rally is a great skill as well. All in all, on its own, it's it's really good. I'm used, but I'm used to using fort momentum on this build, and I sometimes forget that I have to apply a snare removal, a form of snare removal. But uh, my form of snare removal is usually uh, I use I like to use channeled acceleration. I may use ball of lightning in open world. I'll have to see. But uh, uh, for but for right now I'm using channel acceleration. I like channel acceleration. I like the I like the skills that it provides. But I would like a longer form of snare immunity. So I might look elsewhere, or I might make some adjustments to the build in the future. Uh, I'm trying out consuming trap and crush and crushing weapon in in, uh, in another uh, flex spot. I like consuming trap. It's a nice pressuring application, and the resource return ain't half bad. Uh, crushing weapon is interesting. It has really nice follow-up, but I think my timing is poor. I need to practice more with it. My ultimates are Dawnbreaker and uh, are Dawnbreaker of Smiting and Berserker's Rage instead of Onslaught. Dawnbreaker is a cult classic, and Berserker's Rage is the true moniker of the build. It would be incomplete without it. I feel a fearsome ability that increases your resistances and allows you to be offensive if timed correctly. Onslaught works for the build as well, but if you want to have survivability, you should use Berserker's Rage. So I forgot to mention the original setup for this build. This is the Berserker's Armaments. I released a, released this build, uh, I want to say about a year ago, maybe a little bit for a little bit longer than a year ago, maybe two years ago. So it originally had Veiled Heritons, Spriggans, and Bloodspawn. I had to make some changes, so when I first got back, I swapped out Veiled Heritons to 7th Legion, since 7th Legion was the best possible choice. The Legion has only gotten better with time, and if you're not running it, you're either a hipster who wants to fight the powers that be, or you're just looking for alternatives that suits your fancy. The set's health recovery paired with Sugar Skulls in conjunction with class passives increases the health recovery well past 2k. That's including the, the perks from the Daedric skill line. The Daedric uh, summoning skill line on, on Stamps Orc. It really, I think on this build, in CP or in no, even in non CP, I think I'm at 21 to 23,000, uh, 2300 health recovery. So it's tanky in that respect. Paired with physical resistance and healing passives, it's really tanky. It's really almost the norm for heavy PvP builds these days. And the set overall stats supplement whatever else is needed. For my own personal op, uh, for my own personal opinion, I like seventh, but I feel like I will make changes to future builds so I'm not completely reliant on it, which I feel will be difficult since I like sets like that. The other sets I'm using, I'm still in the process of testing multiple setups, but I will tell you what I'm interested in using in the future. So far, Spriggans works for this build, but lacks healing power, and I want to drift to other sets that offer not just damage, but perks that supplement the build survivability and damage all the while providing what Spriggans offers. I'm currently swapped Spriggans, uh, I currently swapped Spriggans out for Dragon Guard Elite, which honestly felt like a step down, but it was interesting to try. I feel like the crits uptime just wasn't good enough and I could never fully utilize it, so I then swapped to what I'm currently running, currently currently running, which is Two Throw. I think Two Throw is an outstanding set that performs really well for BGs, and open world and being paired with the warrior mundus it hits really hard i'm just looking for ways to build into penetration or possibly switching my mundus for more pin or possibly more crit now tooth throw wasn't originally my idea there was another guy named uh trout 1996 i think that's what he's still going by now he doesn't upload very much he's a guy who i used to watch a lot back in the day and i'm gonna leave his channel in the description i would suggest checking out his old stamps work builds Showing love to my mans. I ain't forgot about you. Um, another set I'm interested in running is Dragon's Appetite. It has its own interesting perk spread and health, and the health consumption is an interesting mechanic I can't wait to try. I think it will be effective for BGs and possibly dueling. Open world, I'm not so sure, but I'm willing to try. Another set I want to try is Stoon's Favor. The penetration and perk spread is really, really good then it will scale the tool tip of practically everything in my kit it will it just won't have as much crit which is okay to be honest if i'm using if i'm running rally i don't necessarily have to run crit surge and rely on the crit so much that's kind of why i have two throw that's just an alternative way to play it most importantly i have options when it comes to weapons i'm planning to get some perfected weapons to increase damage such as the vatishan's axe 
or I'll focus on acquiring the perfected Maelstrom two-handed axe for more pin on the back bar of, for those dizzy swings. I have the option to swap on the Master's Dual Wield and use that instead, but that would take more time to farm and doesn't feel as necessary to me as the two-handers. Well, we've reached the end of the commentary. I realize I did not talk about CP, but that's okay. It's probably best that I have not that I had not talked about it because I mainly play non-CP anyway. But when I do make a build video, I will have well allocated CP. Other than that, this is the end. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I feel like I covered enough material to be a benefit to at least a few people. I will try to do another commentary, hopefully on Stam DK in the future. But until then, I'm gonna focus on what I'm enjoying right now, and that's Stam Sword. I will get back to playing DK again soon since it's my OG class, but for now, continue to be a speed demon. I hope you all stay healthy. Thanks again for watching, and keep on slaying.